Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you a shoutcast between Mad Frog and Liquid TLO here on Scrap Station. This replay is brought to you by, or this shoutcast is brought to you by Raptor. And go ahead and check out their website. There's a link in the description. The Raptor website is essentially a Facebook for gamers. So you can go, you can, you know, link your friends, find your friends very easily, find friends to play with. There's always someone on Raptor. There's so, always someone on Raptor so much that I have to close Raptor whenever I do any shoutcasting. Otherwise, a lot of people keep on popping up as I have a lot of friends on Raptor since I introduced my name on Raptor. Over here we have Liquid TLO spawning as the purple Terran player and Mad Frog spawning as the blue Zerg player. One additional announcement, I am now a director for, or I'm a content provider for Machinima. So go ahead and check out some Machinima, the Machinima website. I think it's going to be posted on Machinima Respawn and you will be able to see some of those matches over there as well. Should be fairly interesting or should be interesting. Hopefully you guys can, I can get more exposure as well and then be able to support my family better. Okay, you know, lovey dovey aside, we now have Liquid TLO. Gonna go ahead and move down, perhaps with a barracks over here. Back over here, I do not see um, now continu continuing up to 14 drones, and it doesn't look like he's gonna be going for a spawning pool just quite yet. Let's see if he goes pack, goes past 200 minerals or not. Yeah, goes up to 15 drones. Most likely, it's gonna be a 15. A 15 hatchery at being placed down over here at the natural expansion. We already have an early SCV scout now on the move. I'm gonna go ahead and activate that Zonaga watchtower. There is that drone. Gonna go up. To go. Gonna grow up to be a hatchery. And there it goes now turning into the hatchery over here. We have this SCV who will be able to catch sight of this, and we'll see how TLO responds. TLO should respond, and perhaps being able to set up an expansion of his own or be, do a little bit more teching and not try to produce too large of an army. Marine should be trained up as a, an overlord now moving out. He sees the gas and now pulling back out. So Madfrog moving away with this overlord doesn't seize the gas and knows that it is not going to be any sort of mass marine tactic very very early on in this game. We have an extractor and a spawning pool now being laid down. So we should probably get some early gas, maybe some metabolic ling boost as a marine now pops out underneath this overlord. Overlord now shooting down, um, gonna get shot down by this. No, marine, no, of course not. Only one marine. Overlord will be able to escape very easily down to 85, 79 hit points, but that marine is now out of range. Second marine now being trained up. Overlord trying to get right in within that position, perhaps thinks it can get down over here, but most likely will not be able to get anywhere as a factory now being laid down. So very important to get this I mean, try to make this choke point a little bit smaller as a Terran player. Terran players do not really want to fight out in the open. They want to fight like the Spartans, you know, very, very small choke points, very, be able to very hold a very, very solid line of defense, a good defense, and uh, as opposed to a hundred Zerglings trying to rush up this ramp in a single file line, we'll just get shot down by Marines and what, maybe one even one Hellion. Back over here, Madfrog now training up another queen and a queen over here as well. So double queens now being trained as we have some drones being transferred over to try to get at the most out of the mineral mining. We take a look at this. We should probably see exactly 16 drones. Oh, oh, only 14 drones. So two more drones can fit here and then should start being trained over here as well. So now we should have a queen going to go ahead and spawn larva. No, going to drop a creep tumor. So an early creep tumor coming in from Madfrog, realizing that he doesn't have the economy to constantly um, produce these drones. SCB now moving out. We have Hellions and Marines still being trained as we go into a starport. So this may be a Marine Hellion um, a push into a starport Banshee harassment. That's the only reason why I can see you would go for double gas. Double gas and then Marines and Hellions. And, and only train Marine and Hellions and no tech labs on any of those buildings. I'm, I'm assuming at some point tech labs need to be laid down if he really wants to do with that strategy as Hellions now working their way over. There is one spine crawler being built there and one spine crawler being put there as well. So that Zerling or that one Hellion trying to test the waters will not be able to really do anything as one Hellion coming out. Going to get another splash, getting another line of splash attack over here. Perhaps try to take down this destructible rock. No, not going to be able to as there are double spine crawlers. But Madfrog did lose two drones creating those spine crawlers. So still a very, very nice thing there. We all, we have a medevac now being trained up. It looks like the tech lab was momentarily placed down. And now a fusion core going down. So a fusion core, a very, very early fusion core going down. So we may get early battle cruisers. And that would definitely be a, a, a large surprise on my part. As we now have a starport coming in and a second barracks being laid down. 
perfect timing. One Hellion trying to, or three Hellions now able to hold off that wall. SCV was taken out and needs another SCV to, be, uh, to continue to repair this barracks. And wow, that's absolutely critical. Four Hellions now into that starport. Fusion Core is going to be finished in just a moment. Tech Lab now thrown down and going into going into battle cruisers. That is a definite surprise. TLO going rushing battle cruisers with a Hellion harass should be great. As now we're going to have these um, Hellions drop down here and then moved over, making sure to keep all four of those Hellions very very tight together. As that splash damage is so critical, getting a lot of those Zerglings together and pulling away. And now once again into that medevac. That medevac now going to go ahead and perhaps try to do a drop over here. A queen already in response. And now those Zerglings quickly moving back, trying to trying to um, get within that position. We'll see two Hellions quickly dropped down. And now using that high ground. Oh, nicely done. Using the high ground against those um, against those units. And now using the once again using the um, using that movement speed of that of, of those Hellions. Very nicely done. As now that medevac popping back up. One queen back here waiting for that Hellion. However, the battle cruiser nearing completion. And that once that battle cruiser comes into play, that may be GG as there's only queens so far. I do not see any spires. Um, any spire or any sort of hydralis coming in. Drones now continue to move around. TLO will be forced to drop down that medevac, perhaps try to get another repair off. Army wise, um, liquid TLO, this one medevac um, composes of what, five, 500 of that whole entire army. And now here comes one battle cruiser. The battle cruiser with its 10 damage per shot. Very, very uh, fast attack speed, um, essentially doing almost 50 damage a second, I believe. Yeah, dealing, almost dealing 50 damage a second and will be able to uh, start dealing a lot of damage here. Spire now going into play. That queen will not be able to deal with that very, very thick Terran plating armor of three armor and a battle cruiser rush pushing in. And these drones are going to have a very, very horrible day. How do you stop this battle cruiser? Spine crawler and now going to get shot down there or Spire going to get shot down and battle cruiser taking care of that Spire very easily. Queen's coming over. Hell, for some reason, Zergling's getting underneath, but not going to be able to handle this. As this battle cruiser with that very, very thick Terran plating armor coming in, just able to soak up so much damage. No transfusion. And one transfusion now going after one that has maximum energy. Another transfusion. No, no transfusion. Mad Frog losing, may lose this queen as this battle cruiser coming in. And I do not see any evolution chambers. A hydralist then now coming in as battle cruiser getting three kills. Going to get up to four, five kills very, very easily. Continuing to shoot, continuing to deal that damage. There was one spine crawler there to try to deter any sort of hellion drop. But no, and now a medevac with marines and SCVs in that belly. So the SCVs are there to, in order to try to repair that battle cruiser. Battle cruiser down to 268 hit points already. And now it drops that hellion. And now picking it back, uh, picking it up. SCV is now coming down, trying to repair. A, and the second battle cruiser coming in. Mad Frog is going to be forced to GG very, very easily as that battle cruiser coming in. But now Hydral is coming out. Ten Hydral is underneath that battle cruiser, going to start shooting it down. The Harvester count: 45 for Liquid TLO, 34 for. Uh, no, sorry, 45 for Mad Frog, 34 for Liquid TLO. So that battle cruiser rush did not deal as much damage as I originally thought. Now switching to over to Banshees. And now getting the factory needs to get siege tanks in order to counter those hydralis. Uh, hydralis now quickly making their way over here to the to these destructible rocks, attacking very very quickly. An attack speed of 0.83, so um, almost like a 15 damage per second. So their damage per second, um, a three hydralis is almost the same as the damage per second um, on a battle cruiser. So that's how um, powerful hydralis are. Over here, we now have uh, Orbital Command moving into position over here, but um, I do not think the army of Mad Frog is going, or uh, Mad Frog, um, well, the army of uh, Mad Frog will be able to just simply roll over the army of Liquid TLO. There's uh, one Banshee in play, and now some Marines, but needs to get down some bunkers. But those bunkers are going to be too little, too late. As SCVs now getting torn apart, SCVs now being transferred over, but now this is going to be really, really painful. Siege tech not yet researched. Expansion down here needs to be lifted up and brought over here. As soon as if this hydralists are able to take down this orbital command, that's going to be a very, a very, very bad. There is one siege tank, siege tank nearing completion. A second siege tank getting trained up and gonna gonna be um, gonna be able to um, get in position. There is one ban another banshee coming in. That where where is that other banshee that I saw earlier? Hellions now trying to come in. Siege tank pulling back needs. Uh, no, that siege tank in siege mode is gonna get torn apart and not enough marines and 
Hydralis to really be able to handle this. That Siege Tank with that army of SCVs, though, we'll, we'll have to try to focus fire that unit. Another Siege Tank coming over. So greatly, really well done by TLO. Where are those Banshees that I saw earlier? Well, Banshees do have Cloak. So that Banshee with Cloak now making their way. Gonna go ahead and continue to shoot. We're gonna lose this one Siege Tank there, but that Banshee will be able to finish off a lot of these units over here. Marines, once again, pulling back, trying to kite a lot of these units. But in come Mutalists, and Mutalists are gonna destroy that Banshee very easily. Take down this last Siege Tank. One bunker in position, and now this Orbital Command down to 200 hit points. I'm gonna lose this natural expansion, and this is gonna be very, very bad news indeed for TLO. Two siege tanks here, and a really, really calm play. Mad Fox quickly switching his tech from from Zerglings to Mutalist, and able to hold off that very, very aggressive battle cruiser. Now has, has four, will be able to run off of four bases. One SCV sitting in over there. Marines trying to make it over. Run, running into this one bunker. But this bunker only has one Marine left. No Vikings being trained up. Well, Viking now being trained up. Marines being trained up. But really, these five Mutalists have, will have their ta go to town on this Terran base. Only four Marines trying to combat five Mutalists. SCVs coming over. No Thors to be seen. One Viking going to pop out. But the numbers of Mutalists are, will be able to simply destroy this whole entire base. Making sure that there's no expansion over here. Out comes one Viking. Mutalists should regroup and then perhaps re-engage and take on that fight over here. Army of TLO down to 400 minerals and 200 gas. Um, really, uh, one siege tank, one Viking, and, th and what? Three Marines or two Marines against the army of Madfrog. Madfrog now getting more and more Mutalists. Sitting on 10 Mutalists. Able to continue to mine as many, a lot of minerals here. Madfrog, for some reason, only one gas on his main base here. So that's the reason why he's so gas locked. Um, or back over here, we do have more mining of gas. And now perhaps should try to start mining some gas here. And now going to get some high yield minerals over here. Mutal is now rushing on in. One Viking in position. Marines trying to hold off. Siege tank going to get destroyed by those Mutalists. Viking, that last Viking trying to hold its own. Trying to use that move and attack. Shoot and scoot. But those Mutalists with that faster movement speed. Thor now coming out to engage those Mutalists. Another round, another volley of those Javelin missiles. Javelin missiles able to push back this army of Mutalists once again. But will it? Will Liquid TLO be able to mount enough forces to really counter this and be able to deal some significant damage? Transfusion coming over. So Queen now healing up all of these Mutalists. A great job. I really love the fact that um, Madfrog was using that to heal all of those. He should just call it a death coil for his gargoyles as he's so famous for um, gargoyles in Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos. 10 Mutal is going to go ahead and re-engage here. Another Thor now being trained up. But no, Zerglings and Mutaling now quickly making their way in. That Thor without that extra armor, without that extra damage from the armory. Going to get torn apart. And now 10 Mutal is forcing the GG out of Liquid TLO. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. A quick recap here. Liquid TLO doing a battle cruiser rush into the base of Mad Frog was able to catch catch him fairly off guard, able to take down the spire. Mad Frog quickly realizing the situation he was in, used those queens, spawn larva, and then tried to soak up some of that damage from that battle cruiser. The battle cruiser firing very, very quickly against those queens, losing two of those queens. But as soon as that hydralist then was completed, was able to um, queue up and train up 10 hydralists in a matter of moments. That's the Zerg production value for you there. One building, and all of a sudden you're able to queue up 10 hydralists those 10 Hydralists taking down those two battle cruisers very early. And Liquid TLO looked like he wanted to go to a Banshee start, but it didn't really work as Mad Frog had already gotten three queens, and those three queens with transfusion are able to constantly heal each other very easily. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this 1v1 replay between Mad Frog and TLO here on Scrap Station.